Hello everyone and welcome to another designer chat session. I'm Gene and I'm here with Jonathan Snook. Thanks for joining us. Well, thank you very much for having me. Cool. Well, uh, I saw your uh, Smacks, <laughs> pronouncing it right. Yes. I, I wanted to talk to you about that. Um, well, first off, before we dig into that, if you wouldn't mind, just tell us what you're doing nowadays and, and what you've been doing maybe for the past year or so for people who are just now discovering you on the internet. Sure. Uh, well, I uh, my name is Jonathan Snook, um, as uh, you so well introduced, uh, and I have, for the past two years, was actually working at Yahoo as a prototyper, uh, which uh, when a lot of people ask what that means, uh, it basically meant that we we worked as sort of this intermediate step between designers and engineers, you know, taking the the stuff that the designers put together um, and and codifying it in HTML and CSS, and then um, a little bit different than most prototyping teams in that we didn't really throw out. Our prototype code, uh, we would actually then uh, pass that information on to the engineers and help with integration. Hmm. Okay. And, uh, as a result of that work was um, uh, SMACS, the the scalable and modular architecture for CSS, and it was a way of really documenting my process and and solidifying something that um, had evolved over you know the the decade or so of CSS development that I've had the opportunity to to work on. Wow. So, so quickly, what, what is uh, SMACS? Uh, I know it's scalable, and I'm reading it, scalable and modular architecture for large systems, basically? Uh, large and small. I, I think the, um, what I wanted to really be clear was is that you know, a lot of people start off on small projects or they start off with a small team, and then things continue to grow and grow. Uh, so for example, um, I'm now working here at Shopify. I'm actually in one of their offices. Uh, and it's uh, it's interesting to see like you know they, they started off with sort of their main core product and, and their admin and then they started growing and adding new things to that they've got an app store they've got a theme store they've got uh, Shopify experts and so they, they continually add on and so even though things look small in the beginning uh, they have a way of getting bigger and bigger and what I wanted to do was uh, have something that uh, I think worked well for both small size and large um, but uh, obviously the larger um, they get the more people that are involved. Mm -hmm. uh, that it's it's nice to have something that is uh, clear and, and concise and um, makes you know anybody that's involved in the project uh, better equipped to understand what's going on. That's cool. So you know, there's there's a lot of frameworks and stuff out there. I mean, <laughs> yes. you know, it's um, I'm not necessarily, I guess, you, you just correct me, I mean, is this, would you consider this your contribution as a framework? No, actually, and I, it's one of the things that I, I've tended to avoid just in my own way of developing things, uh, you know, that there are a lot of sort of starter tools out there, right. things like CSS resets, things like uh, 960GS, uh, mm -hmm. um, OOCSS, that there's a, there's a lot of components uh, there's a lot of things that people can bring into a project, but those usually only provide this like quick baseline. There's always all this other stuff that people need to do in a project. So it's not like you can just take three or four different libraries and end there. It's like you can't take jQuery and end there. You need to build out something beyond that. The, the, you know, it is really, um, they help lay some parts of the foundation, um, but, but that's all. And you, know, you, you need to have this framing, um, you know, the, all the different parts of of construction that, that need to go into a project. And nothing really addressed that. And that's definitely something that um, I feel like SMACS is designed to do. It, it helps from beginning to end to really understand, yes, you can use all these other libraries and frameworks involved in your project, but understand uh, why they're there um, and how they're helping you and then how to build on top of those. Right, I mean, and that's part of the, the book that you're you're working on and selling. I mean, you're going deeper than just providing somebody a tool. I mean, you're exactly you're really trying to set this foundation for the philosophical reasons why you're saying the things you're saying and doing the things you're doing. Yeah, that's that's exactly it. I want people to think about why they're doing the things that they're doing. Right, that's brilliant. So how how do you how do you take that from say the work you did at Yahoo? How do you and this is a long question, but how do you bring it to Shopify, and then how do you turn it into your book, I mean, you sort of, you know, I mean, is it just from the trenches that you're just learning this stuff? I mean, what's your process? <laughs> it's, uh, what was interesting was like taking a look at code that I had written like six, seven years ago <laughs> and looking at 
what I've done. It, it's interesting to see the similarities. Um, it, it was interesting to, to look at the, the CSS file, even for my own site from 2004, how I had done things. And I was like, this is actually still pretty close to the way I do things now. Um, it was obviously a very small project. There wasn't a lot to it. Um, it, it I mean, it was like literally two pages worth of CSS, um, which is, you know, minuscule um, <laughs> compared to what we see nowadays. Right. But it was interesting to see like the naming conventions that I followed and how I grouped the CSS together. And looking at what I've done um, within the last two years at Yahoo, you know, where the, the scale that I had to be involved in, uh, not only in just the size of the project and the amount of CSS that we had to create, um, but also the size of the team. I mean, I had um, done freelance and worked for other organizations where I was really, you know, maybe me and maybe one other person on a project. Whereas, uh, I mean, Yahoo is a large organization. We had a team yeah. of five prototypers, um, you know, doing, HTML and CSS for like 200 engineers. You know, that, those are, that's a lot of people that you have to manage and make sure that everybody's on the same page. Wow. Yeah, that's night and day. Um, well, how much did you, this is, this is a sidebar, but how much did you get to sort of interface with the YUI team? Were you sort of part of that? Did that, no, did that play into uh, any of the idea? The, the way the, um, the, the different teams work together, um, my personal exposure to the YOI team was uh, pretty limited. Okay. Um, they uh, they tend to work more um, directly with the engineers. So, for example, um, I was on the uh, really kind of part of the design team, and the design team worked on multiple products like Mail, Messenger, right. Calendar, um, and so on. And um, YOI was really involved with the engineering team. So like the Yahoo Mail team, um, you know, the, the front end developers there would coordinate with YUI uh, because, you know, obviously they used YUI 3 right. for, for all their development. And uh, where we would come in was normally be, okay, we're developing a specific module um, and, you know, here's the HTML and CSS that we know we want to have on that project. Um, but what kind of interactivity do we have to worry about? And sometimes from a JavaScript perspective, um, we might want to make tweaks or adjustments to how that kind of stuff would look and work. Gotcha. Well, so, you know, you started off by saying, you know, we, we've, we've sort of identified that, that SMACs really isn't a framework. You know, it's, it's an approach, yes. um, sort of a philosophy. So how do frameworks fit into sort of the workflow of using this sort of philosophy? Like, say the difference between, and not necessarily a framework, but like HTML5 boilerplate versus something like a, a bootstrap. Right. The, uh, the, some of them are going to be closer to the methodology um, that I've described versus others. Okay. Um, and and a lot, some of that stuff is, is laid out in the book where you know, I indicate, okay, the, the, there's four main components to SMACs, uh, four different types of styles that we tend to see in a project. There's you know your base styles, um, which are things that CSS resets normally tackle. Things like you know what what are my default links going to look like? What are my headings going to look like? Uh, stuff that you know what are my body text going to look like? This is th the global styles that we tend to set, and that's where the resets tend to come into play. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we have things like layout, uh, things that are you know, well, we're going to have a grid system in place. So maybe that's where 960 GS comes in. You know, these are the different components. Some of the uh, frameworks out there um, have their own grid system built into it. Mm -hmm. um, and so it's a case of that portion of the project fits that portion of, of SMACs. And then we get into things like modules. And that's where we start to see things like uh, Bootstrap with, you know, their dialogues and their button styles. Mm -hmm with uh, object-oriented CSS, with like the media modules and stuff like that, those really fit into that category. Um, and then the, the state is something that I think a lot of, there's really no framework for, um, because it, it's taking um, modules and even layout to a degree and saying, okay, well, how do we react to different states? Um, so if we have, you know, an object like a dialogue and we say we want this hidden, well then we apply a hidden state to it. Uh, but sometimes those can obviously be a lot more complex right. where you know we're dealing with uh, media queries where, okay, well what happens when we go to a smaller screen? How do we revise the layout in that circumstance? How do the, the modules react um, to, that, to that change of state? 
that's that's why I like this, you know, because it's like you're you know, you're approaching this like the rest of us do. And, and you know, I, I talk to a lot of folks that they're like, we use Bootstrap for everything. Yeah. You know, and I'm okay. I, yeah, great. But I like this because it it seems like it doesn't matter, right? It's like, yeah. You know, hey, I'm at Yahoo and we do this stuff this way, but this philosophy for how we sort of work as a team and structure everything. This is how we do it. You know? Yeah, absolutely. And, and I'm definitely seeing the benefits, you know, even coming here to, to Shopify in that, yes, it's a smaller team, um, but um, th- again, it's a case of, you know, now they've grown to have all these multiple products and, and um, different production uh, cycles, and they've got uh, all these different teams of people uh, working on things. And the, the design team uh, here is, is relatively small. Um, you know, you're, you're looking at like five to 10 people total for all the designers who also do front end code Mm -hmm. and you know they're building for for multiple projects you know whether it's um, the admin work that we're doing whether it's the theme store the app store and and so on um, how to establish consistency Um, and um, it's it's definitely sort of i don't want to say night and day between yahoo and here but there's different Different teams have had different focuses, different things that they need to work on, and oftentimes it's just you know you, you've got a, a designer's personality that really comes through in a particular project, right. but it might be different than how another designer worked on it, and so yeah. have somebody leaves the company or is on vacation, and you have to jump in on a project, and then okay, well, why are things done the way they were, <laughs> yeah. or how are they done? Oh, exactly. Wow. Yeah been there so let's let's change gears a little bit real quick um how's i mean you you're selling this i mean and you're yeah. doing it in a specific way so yeah. uh just how are you how are you selling it versus going the route of like going to o'reilly or some publisher yeah. writing a book? so about uh, almost a year ago actually was when i had originally started uh had the idea for this um had started to write my thoughts and i had debated between do I write this as like a book for a publisher mm-hmm. and you know get it on the shelves and whatnot? I didn't see this as being a large book, so I thought, you know, is this something that I could send to a book apart and right. have one of their uh, manuals? Um, and over the course of the summer, um, I had done a little bit of writing, and by the end of summer, the problem that I had was that I had all these notes and articles and, and things that really just kind of seemed like a series of blog posts uh, versus this rather large um, totality, you know, that, that had everything that I, that I wanted to talk about. And I had really just kind of gotten frustrated with my progress on it and said, okay, you know what, at this point, I think I'm ready to just throw what I have out there uh, for free that people can take a look at and, and consume. And as a result of that, um, it actually went really well. There was a lot of people that were interested. They they felt like I was on the right track, and then I continually found myself um, invigorated to continue writing, to add more um, articles, to add more uh, blog posts. Essentially, it kind of became like this little mini site. Yeah. Uh, but a common thing was like, hey, is there going to be an ebook version of this? And it, it kind of went back to its roots. You know, something that I, I originally wanted to do was, was make it a book. And so I began doing a lot of research uh, to, to you know, what formats do I want to do? How do I distribute this? And it was a, an incredible learning experience. You know, it was, um, I think, the first time in a while where I really felt like I was pushing myself in a new direction wow. because books wasn't something that I had any exposure to before, um, that I was now pushing myself into a marketing role, uh, which is something <laughs> I've never really had to deal with before. Right. So there's it's all these new aspects that I've I've really found really interesting and it's been really exciting. It's fun. <laughs> yeah. Well, well, how's it going? I mean, how are sales going? Are you? I know you're selling actually, these things. It, it's been fantastic. It, my, awesome. my expectations, I set them really low uh, because I'm like, listen, you know, the the vast majority of the book is available for free online. So I'm like, if it's free, who is necessarily going to want to pay for? Um, an actual ebook, and you know, I tried to put some incentive there. Like I, I am still contributing new content to it, yeah. and uh, and people have access to that new content right away. Um, 
but only those that have paid for it. So, yeah, there was a bit of an incentive, uh, and thankfully, uh, that uh, seems to have, uh, you know, a lot of people buy it just to help support the writing that I've done. Um, a lot of people do it because they want to have access to that extra content, and yeah, it's, it's, the sales have been fantastic. It, it has completely blown me away as to how successful it's been. Yeah, that's Some it's great watching that. Um, I'm really interested in that format of, of it's almost like a subscription, you know, like it's yeah. a book, but you get these ideas. And, and I, I was curious to how that translated into people just wanting to like make sure you finish it, <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's pretty cool. Yeah, it's it's been good, um, and you know, just trying to to continue writing and it. It, it, it's hard because yeah I'm still you know I've got a full-time job so yeah. this is it's still um, it's a part-time project for me it's my evenings and weekends to to work on it uh, as much as I can and I mean, I've got two kids so <laughs> it, it, it's hard to find time to, to get fit it all in but uh, uh, it's, I'm, I'm really excited for the year and I'm excited by the progress I've been making on it awesome well thanks for taking a few minutes to talk to me about it I've been really Thank interested you. in learning about it um, We'll make sure and have it all linked up and everything for everybody. And, awesome. Uh, thanks. Thank you very much. We'll see you soon. Bye.